Today on Context, homelessness and demystifying the stereotypes. Plus, Pat Nixon, who went from being homeless to helping thousands find homes. I'm Lorna Duick, and you're watching Context, the show that looks at life beyond the headlines. Homelessness has become one of the most serious social issues, and the cold winter months bring new challenges for those on the streets and those who want to help. There are no official worldwide statistics, but in Canada, the federal government estimates 150 to 300,000 people are homeless. Advocates argue the number is much higher. Many stereotypes surround homelessness, but are they true? We've all heard the expression, love thy neighbor, but what does this biblical phrase say about social responsibility and justice? Let's put it in context. Michael Shapcott is one of Canada's leading experts on homelessness. He co-authored a book on that issue with the late NDP leader Jack Layton. And he's also worked with the United Nations Human Rights Council. He's the director of affordable housing and social innovation at the Wellesley Institute. Michael, thank you for being with us. Well, thanks for having me here today. Okay, statistics are all over on this, but I'm going to choose the um, Canada's largest provider of care for the homeless, the Salvation Army, has got out this shocking report, to me anyway, the Dignity Project. Nearly one in four Canadians have received help from a food bank or a charitable organization, and 7% have had to sleep in a shelter at some point in their life or been homeless for at least a night. That's like one in 15 Canadians have at some time been homeless. You think this is far closer to our lives than we realize it is. Explain. It absolutely is. It's staggering when you start to uh, take apart some of the numbers. You have to understand homelessness is not just one moment. It, it's a series of moments. People move in and out of homelessness. Uh, people are at risk of homelessness. Uh, there are people who are sort of one rent check, one paycheck away from uh, being homeless. Uh, people who are living in overcrowded situations. People couch surfing. You know, we, we often associate the image of homelessness with the sort of middle-aged man sleeping on a park bench in the downtown. You call that just the tip of the iceberg, okay? You've brought us an iceberg uh, graphic here. Let's just talk through that tip of the iceberg and what's all beneath it. Well, there's hundreds of thousands of Canadians that directly experience homelessness. Those are the most visible ones at the top of the iceberg. But then you have people who are hidden homeless, that is to say, couch surfing, uh, people living in substandard housing, uh, Core housing need, 1.5 million households, 1 in 10 households in Canada. What does core housing mean? That's the government's official definition of people at risk of homelessness. Uh, wow. Then you have 3.1 million households paying 30% or more of their income on housing. It's 1 in 4 Canadian households. That means that they're literally one rent check, one paycheck away from being on the streets. Okay, you also give us some statistic that if a family of four is living on $40,000 or less which is actually 40% of just the city of Toronto alone, does live like that. Mm -hmm. What vulnerability are they facing on, on homelessness? Well, they're, they're facing uh, absolute uh, risk of homelessness because we have a very precarious rental housing market, uh, not just in Toronto, but right across the country. Rents are going up, the amount of housing is going down. So people are, are very vulnerable. We know that more and more people are being tipped over the edge and ending up uh, in the downward slide to homelessness. We have, for instance, in the province like Ontario, 60, 70,000 households every year are being evicted because they can't afford to pay the rent. Wow. I, I want to go to our studio audience. Bill Dick, just on Saturday night, you fed over 100 homeless people on your Queen Street church. You were telling us you've been to several funerals of these homeless people that are coming in lately. What, do you, what have you learned about their lives? The significant illness there is among the homeless population. Uh, so many, so many who are very sick. People who are longing to be noticed in their lives and longing to be noticed even in their death. To put a cross there that doesn't rot with their name and their dates, but to give their life significance. They, they want that in their life and they definitely want that in their death. I see that. Wow. Michael, in your blueprint to end homelessness, you say shelters are costing us 10 times more than actually giving affordable social housing. How can that be? 
Well, first of all, in the 1990s, we saw the rise of mass homelessness and, and uh, seniors uh, becoming homeless, youth becoming homeless, entire families becoming homeless. The kind of emergency response was we've got to at least give people some shelter from the cold in the winter, from the heat in the summer. So we saw the rise of homeless shelters, and they do a terrific job. Uh, most homeless shelters do a really great job, but it's very expensive to provide that kind of uh, short-term uh, shelter. In fact, in most cities across the country, the number is four, five, six, maybe as much as ten times as much for a temporary bed in a shelter as a permanent bed in housing. You think Canada can eradicate, can prevent homelessness. How? Well, first of all, we have to address the root causes. What's driving people onto the streets? There's a few key causes. One of them is the economic issue, that uh, there simply is not enough affordable housing in most parts of the country. Rents are too high, so we've got to address that. We also know, sadly, uh, Lorna, that a lot of people are driven onto the streets because of violence, physical or sexual violence. Uh, that's youth and women in particular. Yeah. We need to address some of those issues. But we can tackle some of those issues, provide some refuge and safety for people who are fleeing from violence, provide a good affordable home, and that will help to uh, end homelessness and prevent homelessness. And that is surprising that it isn't mental health illness that's the first thing driving homelessness. That's a stereotype we need to break. All right, now we want to know what you think. Have you ever given money to a homeless person on the street? Send us your answers. We'd love to know what you think. You can be part of this conversation, but our studio audience is taking a live vote on that question, and we'll have those results right after the break. But do stay tuned. We're going to look at the specific causes that trigger homelessness. Those issues may be closer to your home than you might think.